It's been some time since I last did a video and there's a very good reason for that. I must confess that I enjoy uh, the video medium hugely. I enjoy the creating the creating the creating process and I also enjoy the, the, the fact that it leads to greater engagement every time. Um, however, although it is a lot easier for me to do videos, I have to think always about the practicality of it from a, a reader's point of view. A lot of the content on my website, helpmyseo.com, has to do with uh, practical bias and practical tips and practical things you can do for your website and your online business. It is usually tips on uh, social media management, social media marketing, um, search engine optimization, and that kind of content always has a, num a number of steps which you need to take, uh, a number of uh, steps which have to go on a to-do list, and uh, a number of steps which um, have to be um, re-read sometimes in order to be absorbed and, and put into practice. Because of the way that that content has to work and has to be read, it is always easier for those visiting the blog to actually uh, have it in front of them and be able to go through it step by step. And it is a lot harder when you watch a video because you have to go back in time and rewind and play it again and try to understand everything that's being said completely and perhaps go through the process of creating your own list. So in the interest of uh, readers and visitors to my blog, I unfortunately get to create fewer videos these days, although I enjoy it more than, than the writing process, which always takes a lot of time. Today is an exception because I've actually got a topic to talk about which works the other way around. Um, it is easier to actually uh, talk about this in a video and sit down and write three, four thousand words, um, which will maybe still be of practical value but will need to be reread a few times, which takes longer in order to completely understand everything that's being said. The topic today came around from an email discussion I had with a reader, and it had um, it comes down to, to, to a distinction between two different functions. Uh, the functions are being a leader and being a manager. So basically it's leadership and management and what the two things are and how they are actually um, put into effect in the development of an online business. Now I must confess, um, I've been in corporate organizations for a long time, I've uh, helped develop internal structures in corporate organizations and I'm a great believer in what they do in terms of the way things function in the workplace. Corporations left unchecked um, can be, and often are, responsible for a lot of things going wrong in our world. However, if we take a very cold, hard look at the way they're set up and they operate, they're absolutely fantastic when it comes to developing the roles that every person must um, function within in their organization in order for that organization to actually move forward. And this is exactly the point that I'm trying to make here. I'm not asking anyone to actually try and become corporate in their way of thinking. That is, is, is basically counterproductive and it is something which I personally do not believe in. Uh, I understand corporations are necessary because we live in a world which has to be structured in a certain way and, and that, that's the way it is. However, the great advantage of the web, something which I passionately believe in, is the fact that it allows the individual with a great idea, a lot of drive, a little bit of imagination, and a commitment to actually succeed, to actually do so, to succeed. And everything I do and a lot of the practical tips I put in place are geared towards that thing, success. So how do we go um, from looking at things in a corporate environment to applying those lessons we learn at a private individual um, level, which sometimes is just one person working from home. Uh, Funnily enough, to showcase this, I'm going to use an example of, of a corporation. And suppose a corporation has a CEO, and he has, which it does, it has a CEO, and he has a management structure, and he has a whole lot of managers, and he has a whole lot of people in the lower, um, lower levels of that, which are the foot soldiers. Now, every person in that structure actually has to do something. The CEO has to lead. He's the one who basically sets the direction you're going to. He says, we're here right now, and we really need, at the end of the year, 
to be over there. And that's it. That is his role, basically. Um, once, he, once he sets that course, then um, that is passed on to his managers, who now don't have to think, don't have to go to work in the morning thinking, oh, where are we heading today? You know, how, what must we do to actually move forward? They don't have to do that at all. Uh, that's been set for them. So basically what they have to do is make sure that the processes which are in place to make that happen, happen. And they happen all the time, at a lower cost than yesterday, and in a better way than yesterday. So their role is to constantly improve on the processes. In this um, typecasting, if you like, in this example, uh, we can see very, very clearly what you should be thinking of and what you should be doing as an individual. I've actually blogged about this before and I said, you know, there is a difference between working on your business and working in your business. If you work on your business, you're thinking strategically, for lack of a better word. You're actually putting together a game plan which means that you're fulfilling the role of a leader. If you're working in your business, you're just doing the day-to-day -day stuff. You're perhaps answering emails, writing reports, sending out stuff to be sold, sending out stuff to people who have bought it, talking to suppliers, doing all the things which are necessary in order for your business to work. It gets a little bit complex in terms of understanding this sometimes because we go from a conceptual level of a corporation to the individual. But it, it's not. It's, it's very clear cut and dried. So basically, if you're working online and you want your business to succeed, you really need a vision. You need a guiding vision which sets a grand plan, for lack of a better word, <coughs> and um, gives you a direction to aim towards. That's your role as a leader. Now, very often, you're also your own manager and perhaps your own sales staff and your own supply staff. So you're fulfilling a lot of different roles. If you're not disciplined enough, the um, challenge, I suppose, or perhaps the temptation, is that while you're doing one role, you're also trying to do another. So suppose you wake up in the morning and you know you have to go through certain emails, have to package some stuff, have to get it to the post office, have to send it out to those who bought it, and then have to go and get some more so you can sell it. Which means you also need to update your website and perhaps do a little bit of email marketing and do a little bit of marketing and perhaps decide also where to buy advertising. These are all the everyday things which you have to do. If you're doing those things at the same time you're thinking, oh, where should we be heading? Where should my business be six months from now? Where should my business be 12 months from now? Well, you're also ex executing a leadership role. And unfortunately, because of the way you need to think, those two, most of the time, are at odds with each other. So you're fighting, you end up fighting with yourself, never quite getting everything done which you should have got done, never having clear thinking, which you need to have, and never really understanding why you can't have that. Most people who encounter that, and I see this frequently, I must admit, I have clients all over the world, and I have uh, corporate clients, and I have individual clients, and I must admit that the, there's no sometimes there's no clear distinction in the problems they face. It's not, uh, although there should be. Um, sometimes corporations can get the two roles mixed up and when that happens they suffer from exactly the same problems as the individual webmaster or the individual business person or the individual entrepreneur do. So how do you deal with this? Well, uh, here you have to work out your, your own game plan. You really need to sort of sit down and think, okay, what is going to work for me? Perhaps, and I'm only throwing some ideas in, 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 in the kitty here, um, you can say, look, uh, Mondays I'm not working on my, in my business, I'm actually working on my business. I'm going to take off and go for a walk in the park, for a walk in the park, um, take the dog for a walk, go and read the paper, think strategically, read perhaps the um, uh, Wall Street Journal, do whatever it takes to take your mind away from the everyday things which basically absorb all your energy and absorb all your thinking and actually free your mind to decide if things are working for you and how they can work better. Then Tuesday to Friday you can do all the day-to-day -day stuff and you know if you're actually missing the day in terms of Monday and you work alone you're most welcome to actually increase those working hours and put in perhaps an 18 hour day or you know there's only 24 hours in a day and you can actually max out the 24 and I'm only kidding here but you understand what I mean basically that the things which uh, you do day to day are easy to get done and they just need time, they just need contact time 
Whereas the thinking time which you need to put on your business, that's invaluable because that makes sure that actually everything you do on your day-to-day -day stuff leads you towards where you want to get to. In a nutshell, that is the difference between leadership and management. So leadership is setting the vision. And we have not, and I must say I encounter this so frequently, we have not got enough leadership in terms of what happens in business and we have an excessive, uh, uh, excessive number of managers trying to manage the business. Now that is a corporate problem. <laughs> it's uh, not an individual problem. For an individual, you know, you have to sort of think, okay, what is it I need to do? How do I need to do it? And what are the tricks, for lack of a better word, um, which I can apply in order to think like this? It sounds like a tall order, I admit that. And I understand that sometimes people may be hesitant because what I'm asking you to do is to think almost like a corporation and apply that thinking and apply that way of working to your own individual business. And many times, if you're anything like me, what you enjoy most about working on your own and working by yourself is the fact that you're not a corporation, you're not tied down to these things. You can say, of course, course to think like um, when it comes to leadership and management that um, working for yourself is exactly what it's about. This kind of freedom to be whatever you like, whenever you want to, and fulfill different roles in a day-to-day in -a -day environment without having a boss over your head or any corporate rules to follow. I won't entirely disagree with that. Um, like I said, it's the kind of thing which I like working in my life and although I spend a long time in a corporate environment and I absolutely love the fact that we had um, achievable targets and we constantly lived in an environment which encouraged, encouraged us to, to challenge the status quo um, and basically um, move forward and, and, and uh, push in front of the, of the wave of development. Um, I also like the fact that, you know, I can sometimes wake up very late in the day and I can at other times go to bed very late in the day and, and have uh, achieved what I want to personally achieve. So I'm with you on, in regards to the attraction of this. At the same time, you're working for yourself in order to succeed. You owe it to yourself to be able to have the, those kind of targets and drive which are required to make you succeed. And there's absolutely no other way to do this than to generate the same kind of discipline that you meet in a corporate environment. Whether we like it or not, we live in a world where corporations have the clout in terms of manpower and the money in terms of budgets to outperform almost any competitor. You only have two advantages of them. One is your vision, and the second is your ability to perform it much faster than a corporation or a corporate competitor or a larger competitor could or would. You owe it to yourself to have that kind of vision. And for that to happen, you can't allow all your energy and all your drive to be absorbed in the day to day running of your business. So you need to be able to take a step back, assess what you're doing, assess where you're going, set targets and actually start performing them. You also owe it to yourself to be more flexible and faster and quicker at responding than a corporation which has teams and leaders and managers and reports and meetings and counter meetings and more meetings and meetings on top of meetings because that's the way they work. Um, in order to achieve that. So, wrapping up. Why is it important to have leader, leadership in your business? Because leadership basically defines the vision of where you're going. It gives you the direction. It gives you exactly where you want to head, head, head towards. And then, in terms of management, you begin to take the steps necessary in order to achieve that.